Thank you. Some extraordinary news from up in space in the last few days. Today, a NASA spacecraft met up with an asteroid. Last week, they landed a car-sized robot on Mars and also said the U.S. is heading back to the moon so much sooner than you think. And you might be going. On top of that, a Russian spacecraft carrying three astronauts successfully docked with the International Space Station today. And the good stuff arrives tomorrow. SpaceX is sending its own vehicle, the Dragon, to the ISS. It's going to be packed with more than 20 experiments on everything from cancer research to beer. Here to break it all down, former NASA astronaut Terry Virts. Welcome, Terry. Hi, Kennedy. Good to be here. So some of the stuff on that SpaceX rocket is so exciting. Uh, what is it about the microgravity environment that could help us come up with a cure for cancer, uh, that can help high schoolers develop a better dental glue, that could help Budweiser with barley germination? Please tell me everything. Well, the big thing is that, like you said, this uh, it's a weightlessness. So on Earth, um, you just can't get rid of gravity. You can get rid of it for a few seconds, but beyond that, if you drop your experiment, eventually it's going to hit the ground. So in space, you can turn that gravity off, not exactly, but that's what it feels like, and do medical research or physical science. Mm -hmm. When I was there, we did 250 different experiments. Wow. Uh, so you did spend a lot of time on the International Space Station in the U.S. laboratory there. What was uh, your favorite research? You know, we, we did over 250 experiments during my seven months there, but there was a few that were human related on medicine, specifically for bone and muscle drugs, and also for some immunizations for E. coli and salmonella. And those were exciting just because the potential to help millions of people down here on the planet. Did you, uh, did they eventually develop a mainstream immunization for that? Because I've had E. coli twice and it's horrible. <laughs> I feel Bless like you. I have it now. I'm getting over a cold. I have a cough. Oh, yeah. Um, You're the you second know, one actually, on the show tonight. And by the way, earlier at the top of the show, that was not Dana Perino coughing. That was Bill McGurn. It's, it's been going all, all around. Yeah. Um, but the experiments that we do, it's not like Isaac Newton discovering gravity in one fell swoop. A mm -hmm. lot of these things are just one piece of the puzzle that the big drug company or the National Institute of Health or whatever agency is doing the experiments. We're trying to make that one piece in this yeah. long chain uh, that can only be solved in the absence of weight. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's hard to describe to people. And it's always interesting to see these pictures back uh, from Mars and hear the stories <laughs> of uh, a lander, you know, docking on a comet. But you have something called the CRAS gene, and this is responsible for 90% yes. of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma and one-third of non-small lung, small cell lung cancer and half of colorectal tumors. If they can get a handle on this and microgravity, uh, that can impact people's lives. I mean, now you're literally talking about a cure for cancer that devastates millions and millions of families. Yeah, many of us know someone affected by that. And this is a great example of the ISS National Lab, which is the lab in space, uh, the organization that runs it, partnering with the Frederick National Lab in Maryland to get this cancer gene. They do something called protein crystal growth, which is a way to make the actual chemical of the gene grow really big and really mm -hmm. pure, which makes it easier to study. So then the scientists can figure out exactly the chemical formation of this gene to make drugs to hopefully combat it more effectively. That's interesting. So would it be immunotherapies? What, what sort of drug would follow from those discoveries? Just curious. Well, I'll have... <coughs> Excuse well, me. I'll let no, the okay, I'll let right. the national I'll let the Frederick Lab um, an answer those questions. But it's uh, the promise of again this protein crystal growth technique that we mm -hmm. do on several different types of proteins that you can understand the the formation of it better to make better drugs. Yeah, to combat we're, it. we're getting closer and closer, and uh, the fact that space can get us there something that is so remote, so far away, and theoretical to most people uh, might actually bring relief and extend lives. It's really profound stuff. How, t how soon do you think it'll be before a human being lands on Mars? You know, um, I think it's a question more of political science than the rocket science to get to Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like ever since Werner von Braun helped us make the Apollo program, he's been, he said that we were 20 years from Mars, and we've kind of been 20 years from Mars ever since then. So hopefully there's really a renewed emphasis on space. Yep. And I think with the right program and that we actually stick to it and we don't change it. Amen, Terry I think, Burtz. Yeah, I think the, you know where we're at right now, Kennedy, I think is the end of the beginning. And the beginning of space 
exploration was government. That is so and heavy. I, I feel like a, I'm seeing Laser Floyd for the first time. <laughs> Terry, I we, think it's we a have to go up thing. against uh, a hard break, but please right. come back. Uh, many more discoveries to discuss. Thanks again.